Hey everybody, welcome to LinkedIn Results in 30 minutes a day or less. I'm Ted Pedromo. I'm the author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business from Entrepreneur Press. LinkedIn recently surpassed 225 million members and they're adding two new members every second. So right now LinkedIn is actually growing faster than Facebook and Twitter. They don't have the volume of members, but these are really focused business professionals so it's really a great place for you to network with other business professionals. Over 50% of the members are college graduates and a significant number have advanced college degrees. In a recent article in Forbes magazine, nine out of 10 executives mm -hmm. use LinkedIn at least once a week. So that means executives are actually taking time out of their busy schedules to spend some time on LinkedIn because they see it's a tremendous value for their business. There are now over 2.7 million company pages and 1.5 million groups, which I'll show you how to use later in this presentation. So recently I decided to do a little challenge for myself. I wanted to see if LinkedIn could be effective if I used it for 30 minutes a day or less. So I decided I would, in the month of June, I would spend 30 minutes or less every single day on LinkedIn. And my only goal is to really help as many people as possible. I wasn't promoting my services. I wasn't trying to sell anything. I was just there to help people. And the way I helped people was, if I came across an interesting article, I would share it in my timeline. I would look in LinkedIn today and find interesting content to share with my network. And I would comment on other people's posts that they put in their timeline. I would share their content. I would comment on it, like it. I also went into groups and I helped a lot of people in groups. So my whole purpose was in the groups not to promote my services, not to sell again. I wanted to just help people out by answering their questions. So here are the preliminary results. In the first 10 days of my LinkedIn challenge, the number of times I appeared in LinkedIn search increased 120%. Now LinkedIn is a search engine just like Google, but it's a business to business search engine. So this is all business professionals. So when you appear at the top of search results and appear frequently, it's going to drive a lot more people to your profile and to your website. Number of times my profiles reviewed by others increased by 150%. So on the right side, you can see who's viewed your profile on LinkedIn. So you know who's finding you in these searches and finding you from you posting content and sharing content, and they're checking you out. Number of people reaching out to connect with me tripled. Now, usually, most of the time it's about 50-50. I would reach out to connect with people and other people would find me and try to connect. But now that's significantly changed where three quarters of the time people are actually reaching out to me and I'm reaching out one quarter of the time. And another interesting fact is the number of people that started emailing or calling me after connecting quadrupled. Now usually when you connect with somebody on LinkedIn, you connect and you send, they send you an invitation with that standard LinkedIn message, you may or may not accept it, but when you accept 99 times out of 100, at least in my case, you never hear from the person again. So the fact that people are actually emailing me directly or calling me after it is a really significant improvement in the performance of LinkedIn for me. As something I didn't expect at all, traffic to my website increased over 400%. And I picked up a couple new clients and I wasn't out to get new clients. This was all about helping others. And it just happened a couple of really good clients came along. So I moved on it. It was a really great, good experience for me. So here's my LinkedIn profile views. One thing happened. The first 14 days of June, I was active every day, seven days a week. I spent 30 minutes. I actually set a timer and I set the timer for 30 minutes. And once it went off, I stopped. But after the 14 days, you see there was a big spike in my activity. I started traveling a lot and also I came down with vertigo. So my time online was significantly cut in the second half of the month. And you see the number of profile views literally dropped like a rock. So the more active I was on LinkedIn, the more people saw my profile. So there's a direct correlation about the effort you put into LinkedIn and your results. And here's my external website traffic. And you see, some days I was more active than others. I spent 30 minutes a day, but I noticed that 
Some days I was really focused and I was really into the conversation. To other days, I was just kind of going through the motions. I was half-heartedly participating. And you can see a direct result in my website traffic. It's direct correlation again. So what I learned in this 30 days, or really 14 days of focused effort and 16 days of half-hearted effort, there's three steps to success on LinkedIn. First, you have to build a really strong foundation because when people see you on LinkedIn, they're going to look at your profile, and that's your foundation. That's like your homepage or your website. If you focus on helping others rather than trying to promote your services, you get much better results and you build longer term relationships. And the third key to success was be consistent. As I showed the first 14 days, I was very consistent. I got tremendous results. When I stopped participating consistently, everything dropped like a rock. So building that strong foundation. It is, like I said, your LinkedIn profile is a key to success. Even if you don't want to be on LinkedIn or you don't think it's valuable, people are coming and looking at your LinkedIn profile before they do work with you. They want to check you out, find out about your background, who have you worked with in the past, what kind of skills you have, what kind of recommendations. So it's really, it's you think of a landing page or your website, you got to grab their attention immediately so they know exactly how you can help them and how credible you are. So if you don't complete your profile 100%, it looks very unprofessional. A lot of people have don't use a picture or they use try to lose your logo or they put a picture like a Facebook type picture on there and it's just it doesn't work. And then once you make at least 500 connections, you start appearing in the LinkedIn search more often. Now that's never been confirmed by LinkedIn, but I've read lots of articles and from my personal experience, once you hit 500 connections, Everything just seems to take off with LinkedIn. You also, like I mentioned, need that professional picture. It's just people are come to you, and if you look like you just you're at the beach relaxing, they're gonna say, "Do I really want to do business with this guy who spends more time at the beach than at the office?" And also, another key is use keywords. It is LinkedIn is a search engine, so the same things you do to get ranked high in Google work in LinkedIn. So use the keywords in your profile and your skills. So here's my profile and I have my name at the top and then this next line is called your professional headline. And here's where you want to let people know how you can help them. I'm currently using this as my tag to promote my books. But once my books, another few months or so, I'll switch that to some kind of beneficial statement that lets people know how I can help them. I'll show you some examples here in a minute. And you know, just everything has to be complete. Don't leave anything blank because if you see some blank spaces that doesn't show up, it just looks like you're incomplete. You don't do thorough work. So spend some time. It takes time to build a complete profile. Do a little bit each day. Within four or five days, you'll have a complete profile. And you also need to get those five recommendations from others so you will get the 100% complete profile. Don't add your tagline here or all of your advanced degrees there. And I'll show you why in a second. It's just, it doesn't look as professional. And also if you look in your search for my name, if I add a lot of initials or some symbols or taglines at the end of that, it's going to screw up my LinkedIn searches. I may not appear. Most people, I'd say, Probably 99% of the people use their job title as a professional headline. You get 180 characters for your professional headline. So think of it like a tweet, a little bit longer tweet or a Google ad headline. So when you click on an ad, what entices you to click on that ad? It's got to be like a really compelling headline that's beneficial to the reader. So make it beneficial. Think what's in it for them, not what your credibility is or what your actual job title is. If you have a USP, use that. That works very effectively. So here are some examples of these things will show up on LinkedIn in the sidebar. Well, LinkedIn will say, you should connect with so-and-so because they match you up based on what's in your profile and who is in your network. So they recommend these people. And this is what you could appear like. Here's no picture for a couple of them. There's just their job titles or very vague descriptions in their professional headlines. So 
I don't know anything about these people. Why do I want to connect with them? Artist and healthcare, that's so vague. That's like two different professions. So there's no reason for me to actually even click on that profile to learn more about that person. And then I mentioned don't add symbols or a lot of initials after your name. Here's an example. There's a lot, you know, adds to your credibility. Yes, I agree. But it cut off the professional headline and the only thing that comes up is human. So I'm sure she was trying to say human resources, something, but this is an example of, would you click on this to try to connect with this person? Is this compelling enough for you to click? So here's some really good examples. Here's Kevin Williams. He's actually, he's broken the rule I just told you about. He added president and senior marketing.com in his name, not in his professional headline. So if you actually search for a last name in LinkedIn search, search if seniormarketing.com, he's going to appear. But if you search for Kevin Williams, he may go further down the list because his the LinkedIn may think his last name is actually seniormarketing.com. But I do like the way he used a professional headline, increasing profits for senior living communities and home care agencies. That tells me exactly how he could help me or what he does. And he did break another rule here. He sent me the canned message. He didn't customize the message when I tried to connect with him, but I actually did connect with him because I was impressed with his professional headline. And I always seem to connect with people that have a compelling professional headline. Even if it doesn't have anything to do with what I'm my business, I just like to connect with those people because they, they're doing it right. And here, Matt Gologly, he used to use his job title as CEO of the Cyrus Company. I told him, change it to your USP. He grows companies 35% more a year, a year, guaranteed. And since he's changed that, he's gotten a lot more activity on LinkedIn. He's getting a lot more compelling connections. And also, Teresa here, I make web traffic worth more with conversion rate optimization. So I know exactly how she could help me. If I'm looking for someone to drive more traffic to my website and convert better, I would work with Teresa. So I connected with her. So where else does this professional headline appear? When you give recommend recommendations to other people, it shows up. You'll be right there, your name and your professional headline. So when people look at other people's profiles and they see your, if an incomplete profile or a lot of symbols after your name, unprofessional look, they're not gonna wanna connect with you. But if you look professional and have that compelling headline, people may click on your profile and connect with you. It also shows up when you do a Google search for your name. LinkedIn search results, the Google search results favor LinkedIn, so you will show up pretty highly for your name or your business name. So again, there's your professional headline right in the second line. And here's a friend of mine I worked with him years ago, and I just had to bust his chops because he posted this as a joke, and it's you know totally unprofessional. You're not going to want to connect with this guy, he said. I'm not looking for a job. I don't really care at this point. It's okay. But, you know, would you want to connect with someone like this? Here's an example of using your keywords frequently. You want to use it in your title, your job titles, in your summaries. And the trick is to use it enough that you get the point across, but you don't want to overuse it. Here, LinkedIn expert comes up quite a few times. And it may be a little overused, but she actually, she's a friend of mine and she does rank really well for LinkedIn expert. Actually, she's number one in Google even because she grabbed the term, the URL LinkedIn expert in LinkedIn and on Twitter. So you want to use your keywords in a natural way, just like we would do with Google on your webpage. If you overdo it, it looks unnatural and unprofessional. So use it, but don't overuse it. Helping others. This is, I think, the key to success. This is what's going to drive people to that professional profile that you've set up now. So I help people as I come across articles or blog posts or videos, I'll post it in my timeline. I'll share it with others. And if I want to give some a shout out to a friend of mine or somebody I've just worked with, you can actually use the at sign or hashtags like you do in Twitter. So you can put their Twitter handle in there or their, a hashtag for their company. And if you're connected with people on LinkedIn, 
if you type their name there, it'll create a link within your status update that links directly to their profile. So you can give shout outs really easily now to people and drive traffic to their LinkedIn profiles. I share content from LinkedIn today. If you're not familiar with LinkedIn today, it's like a news feed. You can subscribe to different content, different topics, and it summarizes for you really easily right on one page. So every morning I log in, I can get a quick snapshot of what's going on in different industries or different topics. And then if I see that's interesting content, I'll share it or I'll comment on other people's posts of it. I'll show you some examples here in a second. So here's one where this is a you know, posting. It's got 32 comments, 80 likes. So if you jump into these conversations that already have a lot of activity, it's going to go throughout more networks. If I share on my status update, it only goes out to my network. But when you come in on here, it's going to go out to her network and my network and other people's networks that it's that are commenting on this. So you get some exponential viral effect on your comments, on your activity. Here's another new feature from LinkedIn. You can join in your networks discussions. So if more than one person in your network shares the same content, it starts a conversation. It says, here's what your network's talking about. So if you jump into these conversations, again, it goes to my network and it goes to those other two people's networks because they've commented on the same conversation. So it gives you that viral effect. I do the endorsements. I spend a good amount of time doing this during the, my 30 days. I'm not sure if this is going to stick or not. It's too easy to endorse people. I like the idea that you can endorse people, but I connect with people and I don't really know them or haven't worked with them and they're endorsing me and they haven't worked with me. So they know they don't really know I'm an expert in certain areas. So I like to only endorse people if I've actually worked with them and I know for sure that they have these skills or expertise. Recommendations are really powerful. Originally in the 30 day challenge, I wanted to give one recommendation a day, but realistically, I'm going to try to do one per week, one or two per week, because to do a thoughtful recommendation for someone takes a good 15 to 30 minutes. You don't want to just write up something that doesn't make sense or it's just half hearted. Like I said earlier, if you make a, a really focused effort, you get results. So spend some time, try to recommend at least one person a week. And after you're done working on a project with somebody or an, a customer, Write a recommendation for them immediately right afterward and share your experience of working with them because it's fresh on your mind and they will really appreciate it. Here's another little thing that works incredibly well. After When you want to connect with somebody, don't just send them the canned LinkedIn invitation. Take a moment and write a, a sentence or two on why you want to connect with them and make it, you know, make it personal. So they know you really actually looked at their profile, you saw something they posted and you want to connect with them for that reason. And then when I do connect with people, I send them a thank you, a little message right back. I bought Steve's book in the year 2000, I think. And I wanted to thank him for that book because it, it was a really good book. And I said, I got to get it out again and start using it again. And he responded and he says, good connecting to you. I made a personal connection, a personal reference to him and what's in it for him. And he came back and said, hey, let's talk about doing something together here. So it took me probably a minute, 30 seconds to a minute to write this little email and it could be a good project for me. Another thing you do, company updates. So with the, there's over the 2.7 company, million company pages now. If you follow a company, you can comment. They can post content, they'll do articles, do videos, and anything they post on there, you can like it, share it, and comment, just like everything else. So if you jump in, follow a company that's really big, and you start commenting on their com on their posts, your content's gonna go to everybody that follows that company. So if 20 or 30,000 people are following that company, your comments are gonna be seen by all those people and it'll expand into their network. So LinkedIn is all about exponential viral effect. And it's really easy to do. They're making it more and more interactive, like I mentioned. 
and content can really take off. So they also recently had influencer posts. So if you're a LinkedIn influencer, these are you know usually recognized authors and celebrities, but they're actually expanding it into more areas now. But you comment on influencers. Influencers have a lot of effect on LinkedIn. So it's that viral effect again. Just jump into their conversations and make a really serious attempt at adding value to the conversation. Don't half-heartedly say, yeah, that's great. I love that article. Really make, make it thoughtful. Take some time and make a thoughtful comment because it'll go a long way. Participant active groups. And we're, we all know that probably 90% of LinkedIn groups are really become spam areas because the moderators aren't controlling the spam and it turns into a big self-promotion. But there are some excellent groups and fresh sales strategies. An excellent group, Joel Conrath, posts amazing content there and they moderate the group closely. So there's no spam and it's just pure conversation. So find two or three or four of these really good groups and focus all of your time there. And be consistent. This is where I fell off in the second half of the month and you saw I fell off the cliff with my stats. So what I learned, really have an intent. Be really focused, set a timer and say, this is my, you can do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the afternoon, or 10 minutes three times a day. But when you're on LinkedIn, be really focused. Don't just start clicking around and get lost and all of a sudden an hour later, you've accomplished nothing. Come in there and say, I'm going to go into this specific group today. If there's anything compelling, I'm going to start conversing there. You know, just like I mentioned earlier, if I'm just doing my time and not fully engaged, there was no response to my posts or engagement and no extra traffic to my website or profile. So I realized I could generate more engagement with 10 minutes of focus time than 30 minutes of unfocused time, which sometimes can turn into 60 minutes of just surfing around. Another thing I discovered is Saturday is the best day to share content and engage others in conversations. People aren't caught up in their day-to-day -day routines, so they're on LinkedIn. They kind of do like a half day of work a lot of times. So if you post content, you'll get more response on Saturday a lot of the time than you would during the week. So like I said, have a plan. Focus on interacting no more than two or three groups at a time so you don't spread yourself too thin. Find those really good groups and build some relationships in there. It'll go a lot further than trying to be kind of active in 10 to 20 groups. Never self-promote groups. It's just killing the groups. People are constantly posting self-promotions or when they answer questions, they say, hire me, I'll fix your problem. They don't try to build relationships. They go for the, they're trying to sell. They're asking people to marry them on the first date instead of taking time to build that long-term relationship. Also spend time sending those personalized invitations when you're reaching out to others. It only takes a minute and it goes a long way. Never click on the button and just say, please connect with me, I see you're on LinkedIn. And always send follow-up with a personalized email to the people you connect with and let them know why you appreciate them connecting with you because they don't have to connect with you. So give them, give them, really thank them and be very appreciative. And also have fun. A lot of people think LinkedIn is, you know, boring and there's not much to do. If you think of it as having fun and creating relationships, you'll have a lot better experience and you'll see a lot better results. So that's it. For more inf information, you can go to tedpodromo.com or email me at ted at tedpodromo.com. And thank you for attending.